Hello, I'm TJ. Nice to meet you. Can nice you tell me you. your name, please? John. John. Hello, John. So you understand today you're here for me to do a mediumistic connection to you. So I'm going to look yep. and see if I can connect with the, your loved ones in the spirit world. But as, as you're sitting there, I'm getting a very strong impression of a man that wants to come close to you. And it feels more like father's side of the family for me because his energy is coming in here. And I need to sit up straight. But what you do know about this, this gentleman, which feels more, again, like grandfather rather than father, he's very cold. And I feel... Weirdly, maybe he's having to tell me this so that your dad knows it as well, which sounds odd. If they're both in the spirit world, that sounds odd because I'm getting the sense that I need to almost like put my point across that I understand that I wasn't an emotional man, that kind of, um, I don't feel he walked away from his family, but I get the sense of your grandfather here and family over there, you know, and it's like there's a bridge in between. So uh, he won't let me talk to your dad yet. Um, your granddad needs you to know, almost like he's got to put his side of the story across first. That, that's the way he's making me feel. But that's the kind of man he was, you know. Don't talk about me, let me talk for myself, you know. And your granddad is coming forward um, kind of showing this bridge again in my mind and and, I, and I'm not going to say that your dad and granddad have met in the spirit world and it's all hearts and flowers because mm. there was too much water under that bridge that's what I'm hearing but I can tell you that if they can be in the same room together then they must have moved forward I keep hearing Billy or William as well being said as he keeps coming close to me as well yeah. okay uh, my father is Raymond William but my grandfather his father was um, was Bill William um, William from someone known for me as a kid as Bill. So straight away I knew the name was obviously connected. And uh, and that was it really. And then she talked about his um, his demeanour, I suppose, and he was quite a uh, straight man, a very almost regimental in the way of emotions and didn't show them. And that's what she came with straight away. That was all very much, you know, he's inside, he might be feeling things, but outside you don't get it. And she did this song on a sitting up in the chair, and he was like that. Your grandfather here and family over there. And then my dad came in, and it was interesting that there was the disconnect between them. When my dad came in, he disappeared, and there, there was quite a lot of angst in the family over a certain uh, incident that happened. It was a lot of, le lot of years before they actually... Talk together. Now I'm not going to say that your dad and granddad have met in the spirit world and it's all hearts and flowers because there was too much water under that bridge. And that was so true as well, just the way the relationship was with my grandfather, my dad's dad and, and him. And so that, that again was just spot on. I can't breathe when your dad's coming close. I feel like mm. I need to move yeah. and I can't... Um, I thought that was me, but it's actually him. He's stifling my breathing. It's almost like my, my lungs are sticking together. So I know that the lungs are finding it very difficult. The, the heart is, my heart is absolutely racing as, as he's coming close to me. So I, I feel the way he's showing me is my heart ends up giving up because of what's going on in my body, you know? So the lungs could have probably continued, mm. but the pressure on the body to keep going was too much for his heart. He keeps going back to this, you holding holding on to him he knows he was cold when you kissed him but you kissed him anyway and he's kind of making me feel like you're a little boy and I know you're not you're a big grown man little boy that's how you felt when you were saying goodbye to your dad and you are on your own there's just you and your dad in the room nobody else and almost not being able to walk away from him there's a real feeling of I don't want if I leave you now it means you've definitely gone you know there's there's all that and that I I know it's very difficult when you're right in the middle of that grief to hear, you know, but your dad is kind of showing me that he was there telling you it'll all be all right, son. Almost like you could hear his words in your head. It'll be all right, son. It'll be all right, son. And then you kissed him again and then you left the room. Very accurate to the way he died. He had had lungs and breathing and those things over the years, but nothing that caused it. But it was certainly the heart that actually gave in. Um, and straight away, nobody knew he had a heart problem. It was instantaneous. My heart ends up giving up because of what's going on in my body. At one point, TJ talked about how I uh, said goodbye to Dad and um, what really happened with that. And she was very specific, and it was exactly how it was, that um, I said goodbye to him over quite a long period of time, and uh, but he was cold, but he knew I was there, and um, I kissed him on the cheek. He knows he was cold when you kissed him. You can ask exactly what happened because... Uh, he was put back on the bed because um, he died at home and uh, after seeing my mum and my sister and various other things I just felt the need to go back up and see him and uh, so I 
I kind of laid on the bed with him and just put my arm around him and held his hand, probably very tightly, I don't know. And he was cold and, and I did give him a kiss on the cheek and, and just stayed with him, I suppose. That's, that's what she said. You stay with him quite a long time. And um, it was exactly what I did do. And Peter, who is Peter around you? Pete or Peter? Mm. Yeah, okay, that name is, it's Pete, Peter. It, it, it's just giving me pain right from here, right the way down, like that, and then he's taking it away. So I can't tell, I know he passes quickly, I know he passes unexpectedly, I know there's a shock factor to his death, but it's kind of like, I don't want to talk about that. I want my legacy, I like the fact that you've raised money for me, I like the fact that people still talk about me, and I like the fact that you've got a really cute picture of me, he's telling me, so I hope you have got a cute picture of him. Um, but he's talking about a cute picture of him. So I don't know if this is with his family, you know, like with baby photos, but he's telling me he was cute, because he's given me a cute baby, so I just mm. have to trust him on that. Um, uh, just as um, Pete's energy backed off then, uh, I need to tell you I didn't feel a thing. I just took a breath then. I didn't feel a thing. Okay? Yeah. But he loves you like a brother. Because you were always solid for him. Mm. And that's, he didn't have that until he met you. Pete is, uh, I've known for quite a few years, or knew for quite a few years. He, he um, played rugby with me, older than me. And when my father died, he, or I felt that we became much closer. He almost stepped into that space for me. He loves you like a brother. He died on the rugby pitch. And um, she, she was absolutely right about that. He just died. He, he went up to catch a ball, it was a kickoff, and he just collapsed. And he died, a, a massive heart attack. There was no influence, uh, inference that was going to happen. I'd been training with him on the Tuesday before. This was on a Thursday. And um, he just died. <laughs> It's just giving me pain right from here, right the way down, like that. And then he's taking it away. So I can't tell, I know he passes quickly, I know he passes unexpectedly. She also mentioned about a picture of him and his family, and I didn't get that at all, until actually when we finished, and I realised I had a picture when he died, um, his partner um, gave me a picture of him that I was, for, for, I can't remember why I wanted it, but she gave me, and the picture she gave me was with, with Pete, with his son, Jerry when Jerry was very young. And I should have given it back and I've still got it somewhere. But he's talking about a cute picture of him. So I don't know if this is with his family, you know, like with baby photos. She also mentioned about shaking buckets and raising money and what we decided to do as a club because he was a, a real um, heart of the club in lots of ways. Um, we raised some money and uh, we eventually, we set up a, a charitable trust almost to raise money for, um, kids who don't get the opportunity to play sport. I want my legacy. I like the fact that you've raised money for me. I think anybody who's sceptical, that's because unless you've been touched by something, then it's easy to, to, to poo-poo it and say it doesn't happen, or it hasn't happened, or, or you know, it's made up. Um, they've got to have an open mind. That's all I'll say, is an open mind. And if you have an open mind, then you never know. And um, if they're fortunate enough one day to, to sit in front of somebody like TJ, then maybe their mind will be changed as well.